Hey, Tai here, so welcome to the VRTech channel, welcome back to the True Lenses series, the series where we stick a camera in front of the lenses of our VR headsets to see which one is the best, which one is the right for you. Now, this one was really requested by you and I also promised that I was going to do it, so yeah, I shoot myself in the foot, but here we are with a big PC VR comparison featuring the Pico. With two LCD displays with a resolution of 2160 by 2160 each eye, RGB pixel arrangement running up to 90 Hz, and of course the new pancake lenses, we're gonna compare it with the HP Reverb G2, the PCVR Behemoth with a resolution of 2160 by 2160 each eye RGB pixel arrangement running at 90 Hz the custom frontal lenses and the valve index with two LCD displays with a resolution of 1440 by 1600 RGB pixel arrangement running up to 144 Hertz with hybrid frontal lenses. So yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Let's remember that we're gonna compare two native PC VR headsets with a standalone headset that also can do PC VR. So it doesn't have a complete display port connection but it's gonna work over USB or of course wireless. But yet again, as I always say, this is not a science. These lenses, these screens are made for your eyes and not for the lenses of a camera. So take your own conclusions, see what you wanna see, and then we're gonna talk about every single detail at the end of the video, because nothing is really like it seems. So stick with me, will you? But that's about it. Let's enjoy the video. Let's get into it.
And here we are, this was a comparison between the HP Reverb G2, the Pico 4 and the Valve Index. And I have to say that all of three assets have something particular going on and kind of a root of preference, if you will. The first thing that you notice right away between the G2 and the Pico 4 that, by the way, have the same resolution for key displays at the end of the day is that the HP Reverb G2 is always crisper when it comes to delivering the images. And that's due to the fact that, of course, as we said at the beginning, we're using a real display port connection, so a video output. Instead, the Pico 4 has to get compressed file via USB or wireless and then uncompressed it and reconstruct the image a little. And what we can notice right away is that at the distance, well, we have much less clarity, even if they were running at the same resolution. By the way, every time that I make these comparison videos, I compare the native resolution, so on Steam VR 2160 by 2160 for these two headsets. Because of course, if you want, you can super assemble the crap out of it, but then it comes, oh, I super assemble that, and you super assemble that, and let's super assemble that. So, understood? So again, I want to talk a bit more about the G2 and the Pico 4 because they are the most similar in terms of quality because the index, let's say, right away has the particular thing of having the, a much higher refresh rate, 144 Hz, so everything feels like smooth as butter. At the same time, though, we have a much lower resolution and you can see it from the shots for sure. So going back to the other two, the G2 is crisper, has a clear images, is easier to spot details, distance, to read text, and also the screen or effect is much less noticeable and that's due to the fact that we're using still fernal lenses refracting the light in between the two pixels. With these resolutions doesn't really matter at the end of the day even with pancake lenses yes you can notice it but really if you zoom a lot so I'll say that is a non-issue but it's something that we have to point out because yeah we're making this video for these details. Of course even if the fernal lenses are not as crisp as the pancake lenses on the G2 we have more crispness more clear text because the resolution is the actual resolution is not streamed via Wi-Fi or via USB so it's completely uncompressed and we get all of it on the other side of the Pico 4 yes we lose a bit of the crispness of the 4k resolution but at the same time we gain something that none of these headsets can actually reach. And that's the full FOV crispness. You know, using the cameras in these videos, when you go out of the sweet spot, is very, very noticeable. It's a bit less noticeable, of course, when you're actually using the VR headsets, but with the pancake lenses, we are totally on another level. And as you can see in this video, either, well, everything is on focus, everything has the maximum resolution possible, and everything looks clean in every part of the shot. Instead, on the other side, they get blurred, harder to read, and everything like that. So this is for sure the big pro for the Pico 4. We might have a smaller FOV than the Index, for example, but at the same time, it's much more enjoyable because, well, you know, you can see an entire field of view instead of just the center point of it. And you start to get used to actually using your eyes more and moving your eyes instead of just looking straight and move your head. Anyway, this was the comparison. And I think that each one of these actually a very strong point to be your preferable choice. For the index, as always, we have a higher refresh rate that's still unpaired in the VR ecosystem. And also we have a very nice bump in the FOV. For the G2, we have still the clear and crisper quality for resolution in a consumer headset. By the way, last week was just 350 in the US and that was absolutely a steal. I'm pretty sure it's gonna go back for Black Friday at the same price. And talking about the Pico 4, well, this is a standalone headset, so it can also work completely different from PC VR, something that the others can do. At the same time, as an amazing screen, even if you don't use it like 100%, unfortunately, but it has pancake lenses that really makes the clarity much better in every part on the FOV and not just in the center, like it happens on the G2. Would it be the headset that substitutes your G2, for example, if you have it as a PC VR headset? No, but if you don't have the G2, well, it might be a very nice contender for higher resolution displays using PC VR. And also you have the bonus of a standalone headset and uh, playing wireless if you want, instead of always attached to a cable. For me though, they all get a pass. I really love all these headsets, but I have to say that lately I'm using a lot of the Pico 4 also because there's a problem with Windows Mixed Reality where the controllers don't work with Windows 11, but that's completely another story. But here you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's always take very long time, so 
remember to drop a like. Also, keep your eyes peeled and subscribe because then we're gonna feature the Quest Pro. That is gonna be interesting for $1,500. Yay. Yeah, that was all. What you think about it? Which one is your favorite? Which one would you pick? What's your important thing for you uh, in this comparison? Let me know in the comment below. And as always, guys, if you liked the video, like. If you didn't like the video, like. Subscribe to the channel for more of your tech. If you really love the channel, the channel button there. The turn further in the description. Also, the Patreon. Thanks to all the patrons and to join the channel, of course, for the support. And I see you guys next video. Uh, it might be the review of the Pico 4, by the way. So finally, I think I have enough content and I, I used it a lot so I can actually tell you what I think and uh, yeah I see you guys in the next video thanks for watching